Hi, welcome to Bar Cart Bookshelf, a video series about books and the drinks they inspire. My name is Elias, and today we're talking about No Gods, No Monsters by Catwell Turnbull. No Gods, No Monsters is a mosaic novel comprised of a series of vignettes around an event referred to in the novel as the Fracture, a realization in the public consciousness that monsters and magic are real and that they walk among people, that it's sort of uh, something that exists in uh, and underneath the fabric of society, as is typical of uh, urban fantasy. This is a, a hallmark of the subgenre. But where No Gods, No Monsters really stands apart, aside from the excellent prose and deep characterization, is that rather than uh, looking in on this magical world from the perspective of uh, law enforcement or uh, detection, as is perhaps most common in urban fantasy. We're looking at this from uh, the perspective of the people who are, one, a part of this monster community in some cases, and two, sort of adjacent to that in, in a less formal way, in a less constrictive way, it's a wonderful bit of left-wing uh, speculative fiction with solidarity economics and uh, cooperatives as a defining feature of the approach to monsters that we see from these characters, as well as the imposition of old orders of being with secret societies and um, cults that exist uh, on the monster end of the world. So it was really a delightful book, one that was thought-provoking, one that I'm eager to see continue. Uh, it is the first book in what is called the Convergence Trilogy, and hopefully the uh, following volumes will be forthcoming shortly. And one that I just thought was uh, really a remarkable piece uh, of fiction, one that I included on my Hugo ballot when I was nominating uh, last month, and one that I would be very excited to see on the final ballot when that becomes available later this year. And so, of course, we had to uh, make a drink for the book, and that's what we will do now. So our drink for No Gods, No Monsters is called The Fracture, after the sort of primary uh, inciting incident of the book, and uh, it is really drawing on a couple of strands of thought that are moving through this book. So on the one hand, we have a lot of scenes that are divided between the greater Boston area and the U.S. Virgin Islands. And as it happens, Cruise and Rum, which is my house rum, the one that I use all the time when I'm making classic cocktails or here on Barkhart bo Bookshelf, <laughs> is made in the U.S. Virgin Islands on the island of St. Croix. And so, of course, uh, I had to honor the, uh, the rum that I really go to all the time. And because we're seeing so many different perspectives, I really wanted to uh, tie into this idea of tiki tropical drinks, uh, drinks where in the tradition of this sort of subgenre of cocktail making, you get a lot of different ingredients that blend together in uh, a wonderfully holistic gestalt. And so we do have a lot going on here, uh, but it ends up being a really uh, inviting and surprising cocktail. So without any further ado, why don't we get started? I'm gonna start with half an ounce, or excuse me, a whole ounce, uh, don't wanna skimp, of our base spirit. This is a gold rum, the basic aged rum from the cruising line, just really fantastic notes of caramel and brown sugar, a really good rum for uh, making cocktails with, and certainly one that um, I have been using for the entirety of my cocktail making career. And then, well, before we get to the lime juice, we've got three quarters of an ounce of sherry. Sherry and rum are great friends. Uh, they play really well together. And we're going to get three quarters of an ounce of that golden Amontillado sherry that we love here on Bark Heart Bookshelf. Wonderful. So now we've got an ounce of rum, three quarters of an ounce of sherry, 
and we're going to start with our modifiers. You'll notice we've got another bottle of rum right here. We'll get to that in just a little bit. So now we'll get our three quarters of an ounce of lime juice. Just gonna brighten things up really wonderfully and balance out some of the, the other ingredients that we have. Now we've got a new ingredient to Bar Cart Bookshelf, but one that I've been eager to pull off of the uh, shelf uh, for a while now. I, a favorite ingredient of mine is passion fruit syrup, one that we'll be seeing a little bit more of uh, as we move into late spring and summer. We're going to get half an ounce of that. Passion fruit syrup really is a, a magical ingredient. It makes everything you put it in taste tropical. And so given our predilection for magical books, uh, you can bet that we'll be seeing some more of that here. So it's going to bring that wonderful sort of tart tropical sweetness to the drink um, and really uh, just something that's not quite indefinable but really distinctive once you uh, start to recognize it. And then to bring a little bit of fire because we have a character named Dragon who uh, is a little boy who is a dragon um, we're going to get a quarter of an ounce of that Pratt Standard ginger syrup that we like so well here. Um, again, this is a very fiery ginger syrup. A little goes a long way, um, so be, uh, be mindful um, when you're using that. And We just want a quarter ounce to help keep in balance with all of our other ingredients. Finally, for just a touch of texture, got... Uh, some simple syrup here, a cane syrup, and we're going to add just a bar spoon of that to help balance things out a little bit texture-wise. Um, it's a little bit thicker and going to help make uh, the, the ingredients cohere a little bit better uh, because as you I've noticed we've got the, the rum and the sherry and the lime juice, all of these things that are sort of sharp and a little bit um, thinner in body that can gum together a little better when we have just that touch of texture from the simple syrup. And now we've got all of our primary ingredients in there. You'll notice we don't have our Hawthorne strainer on the bar top today. And that's because we're going to do something that's called the whip shake. So I've got crushed ice here, a canvas sack. Um, very easy to crush ice if you've got a, an ice mallet like I have or um, a, any sort of mallet or uh, rolling pin in your kitchen. And we've got a little bit of that crushed ice, not much, maybe a third of a cup or so if you wanted to use a scoop instead of pouring out of the um, and we're going to shake that up. So this is going to dilute very quickly because we have smaller pieces of ice, so they're quicker to melt. And we're just going to give that a good stout tap. Sometimes it doesn't want to cooperate, especially when you chill it so quickly. <laughs> there we go. Wonderful. And we've got our frothy blended cocktail there in our tin. We're going to dump that into our glass. As you can see, we still have plenty of space there, and what we're going to want to do for that is top it with some more crushed ice. You really want this to be a crushed ice bonanza, um, something that you can enjoy uh, almost as a slushy, and it's a recipe that scales up nicely too. So if you wanted to pull out the blender and do a whole pitcher, a whole pitcher of fractures for your uh, garden party, then it would be easy enough to do. Um, but what you are going to need for the final step and for everyone's glass, whether you're blending or making it just for yourself, is that second bottle of rum that I mentioned earlier, the Blackstrap Rum from Cruzen. Uh, this really is the standout of their entire line of uh, rums. Wonderfully chocolatey, uh, molasses quality to the rum. An excellent finishing ingredient, one that we've used uh, for a float several times before here. 
and we're going to get three quarters of an ounce of that. And then take our spoon we used for the simple syrup and we'll pour the rum over. Wonderful. Until we get a float up on top. And because you don't want your first sip to be all of that black strap rum, you want it to be balanced. Got a stainless steel sustainable straw here and I'm gonna get that in there so that I can then sip this cocktail at multiple layers throughout the drink and really uh, get to see how the variation in the drink changes from uh, the top where we've got a lot of this black strap rum down to the bottom where we've got our, our base cocktail. So there you have it. This is The Fracture for No Gods, No Monsters by Cadwell Turnbull. The book is available now. Got a link to purchase it down below, as well as a link to the Boston Shaker, where we get all of our tools and ingredients, the shaker, the straw, these syrups. Um, please remember to like, share, and subscribe. Hit that bell in the corner so you never miss an episode every Tuesday at noon. Um, try the drink. Let me know what you think. It's one that I'm looking forward to having a lot more with the warmer days ahead. <laughs> And until next time, cheers.